Automatic page refresh is a feature that automatically refreshes a Power BI report. It's a setting that can be enabled for a specific report page provided that the report connects to a data set in one of the following scenarios. So your Power BI report connect must connect to a data set that basically support these five scenarios. So either the model is direct query or you have a composite model where at least one of the data sources is a direct query source. It contains a hybrid table. It consumes a streaming data flow and uses direct query storage mode or it, it is a live connection to a tabular model in Azure Analysis Services or SQL Server Analysis Services. So it has to be in one of the five scenarios and which effectively means that the automatic page refresh does not work for the import model. So it is not supported in the import model. So once we have the requirements that so once our report meets all the requirements that we just discussed and the automatic page refresh capability has been enabled then the automatic page refresh can be set using one of the two options for the refresh type the first option is the auto page refresh or commonly known as fixed interval it updates all the page visuals based on a fixed interval and the value can be set from every one second to multiple days. So the first option is where we have a fixed interval and we can uh, set the value to work from one second to multiple days. The second refresh option is change detection and this option is only supported for reports which are stored in a workspace that has the license mode set to premium, premium per user or embedded, which we call as premium workspaces. Change detection updates all the page visuals provided that the source data has changed since the last automatic refresh. The key difference between change detection and fixed interval is that the user has to specify a measure in the report that's going to be monitored. Once the defined interval has passed, Power BI will generate one single query to check if the specified measure has changed or not. So as compared to the fixed interval, change detection avoids unnecessary refreshes, which can help to reduce resource consumption for the Power BI service as well as the data source. The only limitation for change detection type to work is that it works only on one measure per data set. So you cannot have more than one measure per data set specified for the Power BI report. And another limitation is that maximum 10 data models with change detection type can be used in a Power BI tenant. There are few considerations that need to be kept in mind depending upon the license that we are using, whether we are using a pro license or a premium license. So if you are working in shared workspaces, automatic page refresh has a minimum time interval of 30 minutes. That's the lowest interval that is allowed and change detection refresh type is not supported or not available in the shared capacities. The other scenario is once we are working with premium workspaces. In premium workspaces, fixed interval as well as change detection, both refresh types are supported. But the working depends on the workload settings that the administrator has set up for the Power BI premium capacity. So the Power BI premium capacity administrator has these three variables which the administrator can control. The first is that the feature can be turned on or off. The second pertains to the fixed interval and this option is called the minimum refresh interval. The default value for this is five minutes. But if the user has set an interval that is lower than the minimum value specified by the administrator, then the Power BI service overrides this value set by the capacity administrator. So the capacity administrator can set a value of fixed interval and if the Power BI report developer has set a value which is lower than this 
this value set by the capacity administrator then the power bi service overrides the value by the capacity administrator and the same thing happens for the change detection type where the variable is called the minimum execution interval its default value is 5 seconds and the same thing happens that if the report user has specified a value which is lower than the minimum value then the power bi service overrides the value which is which has been specified by the capacity administrator so the capacity administrator can control the minimum value and the report developer cannot set a value lower than that minimum value so now let's go to power bi desktop where we see how first the fixed interval works and then we are going to see how the change detection refresh type works and then we are going to see the settings in power bi service as well so let's go to first power bi desktop so here i am in power bi desktop and i have created a data model by connecting to a database in my laptop's sql server instance i have provided the backup file as part of the supporting material so you can use that backup file and restore it in your sql server instance and connect to the uh, same instance within the same power bi file but even if you don't have the sql server instance you don't have to worry just look at what we are doing in this demo so i have four files and all of these files have the storage mode set to direct query i can see it from the blue icon on top of the table representation in the model view and if i go in the report view i have created three visuals one is showing a map uh, one is a map visual which has total quantity by city and the other two represent two measures that have been created dax measures one is order quantity the other is total customers and the third is the total location so i am using the order quantity in this uh, visual where i am showing the order quantity and the total customers and total locations have been shown in these card visuals so these are the current values of uh, my, of my report based upon the data in my database so now let's go and see where i can set the automatic page refresh settings so if i am on the report canvas and i click on the format report page here i find the option for page refresh i can turn it on and i can turn it off so right now it's turned on and if i go inside then i see the a refresh type option here and here i have the choice to select automatic page refresh which is the uh, a normal refresh the the fixed interval and the second is the change detection so we are talking about the fixed interval right now and the interval that has been set here is 30 seconds but i can go and change this to any value in minutes hours and days so now let's go to power bi service and see how this report looks like so i have published this report to the power bi demos workspace which we have used in other videos as well we know that that's a premium workspace so we are, are able to change the auto page refresh value as well as the change detection but we uh, for but for this video we are just looking at the fixed interval which is the auto page refresh so let's go to power bi service so i am in my power bi workspace power bi demos and here i see my adventure works apr demo file so before i go and open this file i need to go in the admin portal and see where i have the settings for the variables that we just talked about which are related to the automatic page refresh so let's go to the admin portal so i am going to my admin portal and here is my admin portal and here the setting that controls this is the premium per user because i am using a premium per user license so i'm going to click on premium per user and it will bring the settings that we just discussed in the slide deck so here is the auto refresh and within the auto refresh we have the automatic page refresh which basically controls the fixed interval so i can switch it on or off and this is the default value that has been set which is five minutes and then I have the setting to turn on or off the change detection measure and the minimum execution interval has been set to 30 seconds. So let me change this to a, a value which is like let me change it to two minutes and apply these settings and then we will see the impact of these settings. 
So let's now look at the Adventure Works APR demo file that has been published to Power BI service. And if I go in the edit mode, I'm going to go at exactly the same place that we saw in the Power BI desktop. And here I see the setting for page refresh. So if I expand it here, again, I'm going to see the refresh type set as auto page refresh and the setting 30 seconds that was set in the uh, file in the Power BI desktop. So here I see the option show details. So if I click on show details, so here it is saying that it has been enabled by your admin and the admin interval is two minutes. So I just changed the time from five minutes to two minutes. So now it is showing as two minutes. So every two minutes, the refresh cycle is going to work. But in order to check this, let's go to the SQL Server Management Studio and modify one of the tables and then we see the impact of that change on the report here in Power BI service. So here I am in my SQL Server Management Studio environment and I am going to modify the dim customer table by inserting uh, a record in the dim customer table and then we will see what is the impact on the report in Power BI service. So I have executed this command and it says that one row has been affected. So one row record has been added to the dim customer table. So now let's go to Power BI service and see if our count for the customer has changed or not. So here I am back in Power BI service and I see that the count of customers has increased from 30 to 31. So if I go and see the page refresh settings and see the details, then it shows that the last refresh took place at a few seconds from the time that I am recording this video. And it says that the admin interval is, uh, admin interval is two minutes and the actual rate is two minutes. One thing to note here is that the initial setting to refresh this page was 30 seconds. But as we uh, saw in the slide deck that the admin interval settings overrides this value because this value of two minutes is greater than this value. So this value sh must be greater than the value set by the admin so that this value actually works. So this is all about the, uh, the auto page refresh or the or the fixed interval refresh. Now we are going to go back into Power BI desktop and see that how we can actually calculate what is the appropriate time for setting this value. So it can't be a random value. You need to be, uh, you need to do some calculations and we need to see that what should be the ideal value for refreshing the page. So let's go to Power BI desktop again. So I'm back in Power BI desktop and I'm going to go into the view option and click on the performance analyzer. So we know that the performance analyzer is a tool that helps us in, determine, in determining the time that the visuals are taking in rendering the results after the results of the query are returned from the underlying data set. So I'm going to just start the recording here and refresh my visuals. And I'm going to see that the results are very fast. So it's taking like 300 between something between 290 to 300 milliseconds to update my visuals here. So this is a very important setting that you need to keep in mind while you are calculating the refresh rate for, for the automatic refresh rate setting. So you should know that this is the minimum time that my visual is taking uh, to return the results. And if I click on any of these visuals, I see that the time breakdown is also given so that the direct query is taking this time, the visual display is taking this time and tax query is taking this time. So once you are setting the value of the automatic refresh in the area uh, here, then you should be very much, uh, you know, uh, knowing this fact that this has to be a number that is realistic. You cannot put a number uh, which is less than the number which is the which comes from the from the performance analyzer and you also have to take care of a number of other factors as well so let's uh, uh, go to the slide deck and look at some of the factors that we need to keep in mind so there are three factors that you need to keep in mind once you are talking about the refresh timings the first one is the refresh rate of the data in source so you need to be uh, aware that how much is the refresh rate of the data in the source and your refresh rate value should be higher than that. 
then you need to be aware of the load of the queries on the data source because you might not be the only user who is accessing the data source so there are tons of other queries being run by more by other reports or maybe other users so that also creates a latency and you need to uh, keep that factor in mind while you are deciding the uh, uh, automatic refresh timing and lastly uh, it's it's uh, it's common that the report viewers are in one region and the capacity is hosted in another region so there uh, might be some latency uh, in the transmission of data because of uh, the reviewers being in one region and the capacity being hosted in an another region now let's go back to the power bi environment and repeat the same process for the change detection that we did for the fixed interval so I am back in Power BI desktop and now I am going to explore the settings for the change detection. So I am going to go in the uh, format area and here I, in the page refresh setting I have to select instead of the auto page refresh I am going to select the change detection. So I am going to click on add change detection and a new window pops up. In this window I have to specify the measure that has to be use so it is asking me whether i need to create a new measure or i am uh, using an existing one so i am saying existing one and then i am going to select my measure that i have already created so i am going to select my total customers measure here and then i am going to specify the time here so i am going to specify one minute here this is the time that basically my report is going to check the value of this total customers measure so if there is a change in the total customers measure then the automatic page refresh cycle is going to run so this is going to improve the performance uh, in terms of uh, as compared to the fixed interval because now i will only be refreshing my data if the results of this particular measure change so i'm going to apply it and then i'm going to come back again and show you how we are going to test this so now this area is saying change detection it's saying the measure to be used is total customers and it is going to check every one minute so if i want to change the setting at any time i can change the setting from here anytime so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to republish this report in power bi service and then i'm going to go back into the sql server environment and and run the same a query again so that I have another customer added and then we are going to go back to Power BI service and see the results. So here I am in Power BI service and I have published my uh, my Power BI file and the report now is showing the change that I made for the change detection. So I'm now going to go back into SQL server environment and going to modify the dim customer table by inserting another record. So here I am back in my SQL Server Management Studio and I have inserted a record in the dim customer table. So I am going to go back to Power BI service now and see ideally the, uh, if the things are working then the record, uh, the increase in, of one record is going to take the count to 32. So let's go and see if the results have changed or not. So I am back in Power BI service and I, now I can clearly see that the count for my total customers has increased from 31 to 32 which means that my automatic page refresh cycle has worked well. So this was all about the automatic page refresh. We saw both the options fixed interval as well as change detection. From a DP500 point of view the in the exam you can get a question which is related to any of these options and you should be aware of all the uh, things that we discussed related to the calculation of re refresh timings you're not going to do anything practically that we have done here in this video but it was important to show you how the whole process works so that you have an understanding so just keep in mind the the points which have been me uh, mentioned in the slide deck and that was all about this video and i'll see you in the next video